Yeah. Photos all at home and away and both of us. Yeah. Seeing it sometimes before me. Yeah. 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 Hey guys, can you hear us now? Check. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening and welcome. I would like to call this meeting to order. This is the Scarborough Public Schools Board of Education School Board meeting for September 2nd, 2021, and it is 7 p.m. Agenda item um, 1.0 is the call to order. Agenda item 2.0 is attendance. Diane, could you do the attendance, please? Dr. Gill? Here. Mrs. Giftis? Here. Mrs. Lindstrom? Here. Mrs. Scyther? Here. Mrs. Turner? Here. Ms. Casalonis? Here. And Ms. Layton? Here. And Ms. Bertulia? Here. And Ms. Giftis? Thank you. If you would join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Agenda item 4.0 is adjustments to the agenda. Are there any adjustments this evening? Uh, no adjustments this evening. Agenda item 5.0 is public comment on the agenda. Is there anyone who from the public that wishes to make public comment? We do not currently have any attendees on Zoom that are not panelists. Um, so I do not have any remote um, participants. Is there anyone in the room who would like to make public comment? So I ask that people who make public comment, please address uh, me, the chair, please state your name um, prior to making public comment and please limit your public comment to three minutes. Good evening, my name is Chris. I'm a Scarborough resident and I have a kindergartner in the public school system. 
I attended my first meeting last month and uh, was left with quite a few questions and concerns, mostly about the level of fear and anxiety that unnecessarily exists in our district. I'd like to point out the difference in perception reality based on some facts and data instead of emotions. I'll begin with a few statistics from the CDC to level set. 2,361 hospitalizations for five to 17 year olds, 326 deaths for five to 18 year olds. Compare that to 400 plus flu deaths and 50,000 hospitalizations during 2018 and 2019 flu season and baseline that off 73 million children in the US. Some of those numbers were used at the last meeting and they were spoken completely out of context. Those are national numbers. They are not numbers for here in Cumberland County. And I feel that the local response and restrictions does not adequately reflect the current situation that we face here in our community. If masks work, then why don't they work? Think about that for a minute. Point to one area or location that used masking to generate a successful outcome in the past 18 months. CDC did a study from Georgia and published it in May, which involved 90,000 students in 169 schools in Georgia. Conclusion, masks offer no statistically significant benefit to stopping the spread. Same for air filters, physical barriers, and distancing. What layers do work? Adult vaccinations and better ventilation, like opening a window in the classroom. Cumberland County has greater than 85% adults vaccinated. That is a tremendous accomplishment, likely closer to 90% when you factor in natural immunity for those who are infected and have not been vaccinated. That statistic alone is our best defense for our children. And I want nothing best for our children. Near peer nations, the United Kingdom, all of Scandinavia, Iceland, France, Italy, recognize the social and developmental harms associated with masking children for prolonged periods. How will my kindergartner learn to read and enunciate this year with universal masking? Think about that. Children are less likely to have severe disease from SARS-CoV-2, thank God, and when infected, less likely to be symptomatic, which correlates with lower contagiousness. The onus is on those who recommend masking kids to robustly demonstrate a meaningful benefit, especially when there are obvious socio, emotional, and educational harms from masking children. I find it disappointing that the board voted 9-0 for universal masking last month. That number doesn't reflect the views of the community that elected you to rep represent us. When did we become a zero risk society? I'll leave you with these questions and I know I probably won't get a response. What is the metric for success? When will the mask come off the children or do you expect them in perpetuity? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to make public comment this evening? With that, I will close public comment. Agenda item 6.0 is the superintendent's report. Thank you, April. Um, I just wanted to uh, quickly share, I uh, shared a couple of slides. Um, the first uh, is really just to, to highlight and to welcome everyone back uh, onto, onto, into school buildings and onto campus. So we, we had uh, two full days of staff uh, professional development. So there was, there was um, a lot of building-based, um, mostly building-based exclusive meetings on, on Monday. And then on Tuesday, uh, for the first time, I believe, and at least in, in recent memory, had had the all district opening outside on on the turf with uh, the, all the staff uh, in the grandstands, and and it was just you know we got got the got a little music going, and it was um, uh, we got a lot of just positive feedback and positive energy, and it's just it was just really nice, I think, for everyone to to see each other back in person. Uh, so uh, we had a nice uh, nice breakfast with staff K to twelve, and then. Um, and, and and just had had the ability to just to connect and just wanted to um, uh, thank you, April, for your remarks and and also uh, Michelle from SEF um, made some remarks and and we had uh, it was just it was it was a really nice opening and it was great you know certainly for me to to um, start to to see everyone in, in district and and set the tone for the year and so that that was that was awesome uh, the sneak peeks at, at at Wentworth and at the K to two schools have been underway. Um, I got a chance to, to take part a little bit in the, in the sixth grade and, and ninth grade orientation days. Um, 
on what's, what's today thursday on wednesday it's been a crazy week um, uh, on wednesday which which was great and, I'm, and new students to uh, scarborough high school as well as the freshmen getting their tours and then um, doing a whole lot of this this morning uh, with the rain and and transportation and buses and everything but um, got everybody to school um, we're pretty close to on time, uh, even with even with a long drop off line at the middle school. But um, all the kids were just just they just it was just a lot of positive energy energy and ready to be back in buildings and see their friends and everything. So with uh, um, and then just really excited to see all of that uh, as we go into next week with with getting our um, elementary school kids back um, for full days as well. So. Uh, the just the staggered all the preparations that went into um, you know getting everybody back and feeling comfortable I just think was was done so well and and so many so many people putting so much effort into into welcoming our kids back so just really excited and uh, even got a first taste of uh, my first senior parade in the class of 22 20 coming in the building and um, and it was it was neat. It was neat. So, um, and again, there's there's certainly kinks to work out uh, implementing our reopening plan. Um, you know, things are going to shake out over the next week or so with transportation, getting arrival and dismissal things on time and and rolling. But um, but overall, it was just it was just a really great day um, from from where I from where I sat, and it was it was neat to be a part of it. I'm going to share it a couple couple of pictures as well. So the staff and the grandstands and then a couple of pictures of the senior parade from this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item 7.0 is the chair's report. Um, and I will piggyback right on top of what Jeff just said in terms of just saying thank you. Uh, thank you to all of our administration um, and the support staff who were able to pull off such a successful reopening the last couple of days. Most especially thank you to our teachers um, and our support staff in the buildings who make that possible. Um, I know that, you know, speaking personally, my kids had a very smooth couple of days these last couple of days and just positive attitudes. Um, you know, just really grateful to be back in buildings. Um, as Jeff mentioned, I was, I had the opportunity to say some opening remarks um, and the opportunity to speak to our whole staff was one that I did not take for granted and will not soon forget. Um, so I appreciated that opportunity and it meant a lot to me to be able to do that. So thank you for that. Um, I have a couple of announcements to make. Uh, last night, September 1st, 2021, at the town council meeting, the town council voted unanimously at their second reading to put the turf track replacement um, on the November referendum. And so that is one hurdle that we have now, um, you know, one box we can check. I shouldn't say hurdle, one box we can check um, towards our pursuit of getting that approved um, and get that project underway. My other announcement is that nomination papers um, have all been returned. The deadline for returning nomination papers was yesterday. Um, there are four candidates running for our three three-year terms. Um, on the town council, I didn't put this on the slide, on the town council, there are three seats on the town council. All three seats are uncontested. Um, I would never use my position on the board to talk about myself ever and I'm super uncomfortable, but um, I will announce that I have decided to run for one of those town council seats. Um, and so in November, my name will be on the ballot as a candidate for town council. Um, candidates night has been scheduled for Thursday, September 30th. So stay tuned and stay engaged and learn about the candidates that are running for positions. Um, that's it. We know how important it is um, to have faith and knowledge of the people who are making these important decisions. So please stay engaged. And that I think is all I have. Agenda item 8.0 is committee reports. If you wanna do next slide, Diane, thank you. Communications. Well, it looks like the topic of the night. Um, vote yes on two is the focus of the communications committee. 
Um, now that the turf and track has been approved and it's on the November ballot, we do have a cross-functional team that's meeting every uh, Monday afternoon at noon. We're working through our communication plans um, so that we can get out to the community, share what the need is. Um, we're looking at creative ways to get out the information. Um, so more to come on that as it gets closer and we have definitive plans. Um, this is a call for kind of an all hands on deck, um, knowing that this is the second time we've come out to try to get the ballot um, approval to replace the turf and track. As many folks from the board who can pitch in would be great, you know, greatly appreciated any input, suggestions, ideas. Um, if folks are super creative with creating memes or um, posts that we can put onto social media, um, ideas on creative ways to get the word out, please let the communications committee know. Thanks. Thank you, Leanne. Negotiation. Yes, um, I put balloons on our slide. I was I, so I, excited <laughs> to see that. <laughs> um, so uh, we had a, um, a meeting yesterday, the first, um, and I'm very excited to say we have a verbal tentative agreement for our bus driver's contract. Um, so it's a very exciting uh, thing. We've had a lot of hours invested by not just myself, but also Alicia and Shannon off to my left and Diane at the very end of the dais, um, not to mention the SEA team. So it's been a lot of time and effort put into coming to this. I'm very excited about the tentative agreement that we have. I think it's going to be um, very exciting for our bus drivers as well. Um, just to kind of give some ideas of next step for anyone that's new to this whole process, um, we will have an executive session sometime between now and our next meeting, with the goal being that we ratify, have a ratification vote on the 16th. Um, you know, and we talked about that a little bit last night, because obviously these um, contracts, ideally, and this one is an example of this, go all the way back to the uh, day after the expiration of the past contract, which was June 30th. So there's retro pay involved in this. And so we want to get those checks in the hands of our employees as quickly as possible. So we're looking forward to having that ratification vote on the 16th. Um, we did have our mediator, our mediation for the uh, educational support staff professionals on the 25th. Um, it was a very productive five hour session, um, but time well spent. And I do believe we're getting close to a tentative agreement there too. So that's exciting to think about as well. Um, our custodian contract, as you all, or anyone that's been listening to me talk about this, know that we had three contracts on the, on the docket. The custodian contract is the last one to get in place. Um, and the SEA is currently working on that scheduling. I'll be reaching out to the board with their availability so we can get going on that one as well. So um, real momentum and exciting things to announce, hence the balloons. Thank you, Nick. And thank you to the negotiations team who has been working a lot of hours on those contracts. Finance. Uh, cool. So yeah, we met uh, yesterday and talked about what are some things that we can do a, between now and when the next budget cycle starts and started talking about what our priorities and goals should be for this year. Um, so I just want to quickly run through those. I think that the first one's pretty obvious. Um, I think the last couple of years we've we've seen, uh, you know, improved collaboration and communication with town councils. So just want to continue that theme and, and strengthen that bond, especially as there's going to be new um board members and likely not any new town councilors or maybe maybe one uh, but some new board members involved so making sure that you know there's a plan in place to maintain that relationship and then strengthen it um one of the other things we want to do and i think we we talked about this years ago and then um you know the the planning for the pandemic and um, other budget goals took priority but we really want to have a go at looking at the um the policies the budget policies and see if we can revamp those we know that they're out of date um compared to our our current practices so we want to just update those and make sure that they're currently uh that they're up to date with what we how we operate today and then also look at what are some areas for improvement um we need to create a capital reserve fund so that's something that's going to happen at the board level It'll probably be um initiated by a board workshop that'll be scheduled you know sometime between now and probably like early or uh, late winter. Um, and then the final thing is more of just, you know, a, su a support goal. Um, I don't think there's a specific role necessarily for the finance committee in the district wide project. So the Turkey Traffic renovation and the consolidated school, but just being a support system um, and providing any information and support and help that we can for both of those projects. That's it. 
Great, thank you, Sarah. Does that wrap up community reports? <laughs> um, so Kristen and I had the opportunity just two hours ago um, and, and April joined us as well to meet with members of the building steering committee for our consolidated, I, I use that word very trepidatiously, our new school for the primary school um, students. And uh, that group for everyone that kind of remembers is a, is a very well um, qualified group full of engineers and designers and people that have been involved in, in school builds before. And so we talked out kind of where this process stopped back in April of 2020, just as COVID was kind of revving up. And I think our last meeting was actually one of our first virtual conversations as members of the school board with the public and a committee. And um, one thing that they talked about that we talked about at length today was the idea that the most success that they've, most of the time when these projects are successful is when they can really start with town leadership involved from the very beginning with the important support of the school board and the educators to figure out what that building looks like. Um, and so what they said is, you know, this time around as we kind of go to start this charge again, um, which if my count is correct, is, it, is at least the third time we've tried to kind of reinvigorate this process, starting with the board before us, and then, and, and when I say us, I mean me, because I've been here about three years and then we kind of picked it back up and then COVID slash budget issues kind of stalled us out right at the design phase. They really strongly encouraged us to consider approaching the town about leading this, specifically our town manager with the town council in collaboration with our superintendent, kind of those two individuals really spearheading this and leading it from the start with the support of the school board, rather than it be kind of a school led effort that then we kind of go to the town council and say, here's what we've been doing, will you support us? It's an idea of kind of getting the town leadership involved in the very beginning. So that conversation is literally just over two hours old, but, but Kristen and I did wanna bring it to the board just as, just as a kind of a heads up that this is a direction that the committee is strongly uh, encouraging. And when I say the committee, I mean all of us, but specifically the individuals from our town who know this work, who've done this work and have seen it when it works really well and when it struggles to get traction. And so I, I take their advice very seriously. I think it's a, it's a very good idea, specifically because we have seen trouble in getting it going when it's led just by the schools and so I wanted to, it's not a rehearsed statement. I'm kind of saying it, thinking it and saying it as I go. And Kristen, please jump in if I missed anything. But uh, we just wanted to get out in front of everyone tonight since we had a meeting and just kind of get that idea on the table as we think about restarting this effort. Did I miss anything? No, that was great. Thank you. Oh, I was going to call on Sarah first and then you can go, Alicia. Yep, go ahead, Sarah. Um. So I have a, a question and then I have a comment that was is kind of a, a town council liaison update that I forgot to put a slide in for. So apologies for that. But I guess my, my question for Kristen and Nick is what what did you guys agree as next steps with this committee? And when is that gonna take place? Whatever the next step is. I wish I could remember how Kylie put it in our meeting, but the next step would be really Jeff and Tom getting together and sort of talking about this. So there's no, I think, you know, there's a lot of conversations that need to happen and that's probably the first one. And then there would be more conversations with the rest of the board. There would be more conversations with the council and sort of see how it goes from there. And as far as like the next kind of action step for the project, I mean, those getting that kind of groundwork done is really the very next thing. But the next actual action would be kind of reconnecting with Harriman, making sure they're still interested in the project because we had kind of our last action as a board had been to approve approaching them uh, about doing kind of this next step about site selection and all of that. But um, that's the next step of the process. But first we have to kind of get the town council and, and, and specifically Tom on board with kind of co-leading this with our superintendent to kind of get us moving again. But the next actual physical tactical step would be to re-engage Harriman and do a site selection and kind of go to the next step of that. And look, review, review sites, if, I get, if I'm remembering that right. Yes. Yeah. So, so related to the site comment, um, 
as I don't know if anybody watched or was joined. I think April, you were there in person, but last night the town council held a CEA or a down sort of update workshop. Um, it's part of their scheduled cadence of reporting on how they're doing. And uh, the gist of it is they're exceeding expectations in terms of their progress. Um, but the important thing that I wanted to call out, or I guess the thing that relates to the schools um, was the discussion about a school being built within the Downs property. And I know that this is something we've talked about in the past, and it's kind of been this like, maybe could be but no one really knows kind of how to progress in it sounds like the next step that you guys are taking will hopefully consider the downs as a site um one of the things that was discussed last night though in in the past i think there's been some comments that a consolidated there was no room for a consolidated school within the downs and that was um that is seems to no longer be the case uh so i i i, I guess all of this to say it should not be ruled out um as a as a location until we've done the proper site work yeah and actually one of the members of the committee has actually done some preliminary work and kind of working with i don't know who but she's already identified i believe six or seven potential sites and i wouldn't be surprised if that's one of them um, for a, a facility of this size and type so you know it's really a matter of vetting those sites and kind of figuring out what what's the best fit but um some of that preliminary work had already been had been done, but um, I do recall what you're saying, Sarah. I remember there was kind of like a, a yay school in the downs, and then all of a sudden it was like, well, yes, but maybe not a building of this size. And 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 if that's changed again, it's you know that that site is developing, and so I understand that that can go back and forth. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know any details about what the work she's done, but I know that there's been some sites that have already been identified around town. Um, from a board perspective and from a public process perspective, um, the takeaway that I had today during the meeting was that there would be some value um, to the board and to the public to have members of the building steering committee come and just do a brief, very brief um, presentation, but not even presentation, just kind of present their rationale on the direction that they think that the building steering committee needs to go to the board and to the public. Um, members of the building steering committee articulated it so well to us today. Um, and I just feel like in order to really do that work justice, nobody speaks to it better than they do. Um, and so I would, I will be, you know, in communication with Jeff as he communicates with Tom um, and kind of pull these pieces together. But I would like to have, um, you know, for the board purposes and for the public purposes, um, have members of the building steering committee come and, and kind of relay some of the summary that Nick and Kristen were able to give us, you know, from their own professional perspective. Um, so that will be on a, a, a future agenda for sure. Yes, Alicia. It's actually the first question though. Um, I was just gonna, uh, Sarah asked my question, but I, I wanted to ask you if you could invite um, Tom and members of the town council to that presentation? Absolutely, if that uh, is the direction that the conversations that Jeff and Tom have, and we can kind of get all on the same page that that's, that's the direction they wanna head in. Absolutely, I can honor that. And I'm making a note. Any other questions? Any other liaison or committee reports? Seeing none, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to agenda item 9.0, which is new business. And I believe I'm turning this over to Diane. Great, thank you so much. Um, so this evening we have in front of you um, uh, an update from the Scarborough Central Certification Committee. And I actually have two members of that committee who are in the audience tonight, Lisa Roberts and uh, Jessica Conroy. Um, we have worked together this summer to update the professional learning community support system plan um, as it relates to all teachers and ed techs in the district. And hopefully you all were able to receive the update and review that before this evening's meeting. Um, so we worked this summer um, 
The plan itself details the support that um, the district provides to beginning educators and the process for teachers and educational technicians to recertify. Uh, our work this summer really stemmed from needed updates because of some changes in statutory requirements um, around certification and some um, DOE processes that changed. And so we really wanted to make sure that we were going back and make and ensuring that our document was the most accurate and reflective of what our practice should be. Um, it was our plan to do this work last summer and we got waylaid um, by COVID like the rest of the world did. Uh, so we spent some good time together this summer. Um, and uh, I think what I've tried to do here is really just highlight the substantive changes. Um, the first is really shifting the requirements for beginning educators uh, whereas the state no longer has a provisional certificate. Um, our plan really in the past had hinged upon the fact that beginning teachers had a two-year certificate and needed to fulfill some requirements. And so um, we made some changes based on that. Um, we also updated the standards that are connected to the work that our beginning educators do. Um, the most current standards are called in-task standards before we um, had used the what uh, the plan hasn't been updated for 10 years, right? So, so the standards that were being used were dated. Um, there's also no longer a requirement um, for recertifying educators to write professional action plans, if you will. Um, you know, that, that terminology in and of itself is problematic because it, it sounds as though, uh, you know, there needs to be some kind of correction, um, but, uh, up until this point, um, our educators would have to kind of write a plan for how they were looking to continue to improve their professional practice. Um, and the most current statute is really just about um, demonstrating that they have attained a certain number of contact hours. Uh, and so we have streamlined that process for our continuing educators so that that is one less step for them to go through. Um, all of our educators already write yearly professional goals. And so to ask them to do this as part of their recertification plan was really a duplication of efforts. Um, and so uh, that is part of the update. And then just as an aside, but related to this, the other great piece of work that um, came out of this this summer is um, we are moving to a process of online documentation um, for all professional growth activities through a, a platform that we use called Protrax. And so um, we just need to expand the use of that. And again, um, we certainly have heard feedback from lots of educators that we need to have less forms for people to fill out, less paper to push. And I think that we all agree to that. Um, and so we're really excited about um, moving in this direction. And certainly, you know, I'm not trying to steal the spotlight from Lisa and Jessica. They did ask if I could speak this evening, but they are available if you have any questions. I'm sure they would love to come up to the mic. <laughs> Is there anyone on the board who would like to ask questions at this time? Nick. Hey. I'll just make a quick comment. Actually, it's not a question, so don't worry. You don't have to come to the mic. But um, <laughs> I, I just know that as, as part of the many negotiations, con, uh, conversations I've been in in the last three years, one thing that is consistent is exactly what you said, is you know, less forms, less paper. And so it's so exciting. And, and I think um, everyone is going to be happy to see that that's come true, at least in part, due to this work. So I want to thank you all for, for helping deliver on that promise that we've been talking about at the negotiation table for three years, at least three years. Great. Other questions or comments? Okay. Uh, this is listed as an action item, um, which requires board approval. So do I have a motion to approve the Scarborough Central Certification Committee plan? So moved. Second. Discussion? 
Seeing none, I think we're ready to vote. Great. Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Ms. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Scyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. And Ms. Bertulia? Yes. Excellent, thank you everyone. I realized I jumped the agenda because that's what listed as an action item at the bottom of our appointments, but that's okay, we'll, we'll do it now. <laughs> agenda item 9.2 is appointments. Agenda item 9.2.1 is an appointment of our own. This is student representative committee assignment. Um, I reached out to Yulia and asked her which committee she would like to be a part of. And she had indicated that she would like to join the curriculum committee. So I contacted uh, Sarah, who is the chair, and we both agreed that that would be a fantastic addition to that committee. So do I have a motion to approve Yulia Bertulia to join the uh, curriculum committee? So moved. Discussion? Seeing none. Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Scyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. And Ms. Bertulia? Yes. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. Uh, the remainder of our appointments are uh, the superintendents. All right. So we have uh, um, two appointments. Um, first is a high school student video production yearbook teacher. So Lorraine Ar Armando has been chosen to fill this position created by a realignment. Mrs. Armando has received both her Bachelor's of Arts degrees in Communications and her Master's of Arts in Educational Leadership and Supervision from Seton Hall University. She's been a technology instructor at Communications High School in New Jersey for five years, as well as one year at RSU 21 in Kennebunk. And then since 2006, has been a technology and English instructor, instructor at Chevrolet High School. Um, also a middle school math teacher, a one-year position, so Heather Jacques has been selected to fill this position created by resignation. She earned both her bachelor's degree in life sciences and her master's degree in business administration from Maharishi University in Iowa. She anticipates receiving her doctorate in 2024. Uh, Mrs. Jacques has been a substitute teacher in both Old Orchard schools and most recently as a long-term substitute at Scarborough Mill School. We can go ahead and bundle 9.21, 9.22 into one motion. Go ahead and move this over. My mic's not on, sorry. We can go ahead and bundle 9.21 and 9.22 into one motion. Do I have a motion to approve as presented? So moved. Second. Discussion? Seeing none. Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Scyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. And Ms. Bertulia? Yes. Excellent. And Superintendent Bruno, we actually need to go ahead and approve all of the lead teacher, which I think is also, and we can just move to approve as presented if that's okay, yep. okay with you. Okay, that's great. so we received um, the full list of um, lead teacher appointments in our packet ahead of time. So do I have a motion to approve the lead teachers as presented? So moved. Second. Second. Dis discussion? Seeing none. Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Scyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. And Ms. Bertulia? Yes. Excellent, thank you. Does that take care of all of our appointments this evening? I believe so. Okay, perfect. Agenda item 10.0 is adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Discussion. Seeing none. Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Scyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. And Ms. Bertulia? Yes. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy your evening. Thanks, guys.